When you hear a police siren, you know something serious is going down, and the cruiser has to get there fast. It's I'll a slick you. radio ad, brought to you by none other than the Toronto Police Union, complaining once again about having to follow the rules. So why are two officers in pursuit of a stolen van being charged with dangerous operation of their cruiser? Being charged for doing their jobs the way they were trained to do them. To serve and protect. It's getting harder all the time. The union has become a sophisticated political machine. With media strategists, political spin doctors, they even have 30 lawyers on retainer. All working with a single purpose, to advance the union's law and order agenda. But this machine eats up a lot of money. So this winter, the union came up with a brilliant idea to replenish the war chest and raise their public profile at the same time, a telemarketing campaign they called True Blue. True Blue is a major program that will unite the police and citizens as never before. We'll provide funding for the Toronto Police Association to get their message out to the public on issues of importance such as the... This was the pitch. Make a donation, and in return, you'll get an eye-catching decal to display on your windshield. $25 for a bronze decal, $50 for silver, and 100 bucks for the gold. Reaction was swift. Outrage poured in to the hotline shows, to the newspapers, and especially to the politicians, who were getting hundreds of phone calls from angry constituents. I was shocked. I was appalled. What they were all angry about was the perception that if you paid for the decal, you'd get special treatment from the police. If you ran a red light, maybe the cops would look the other way, especially if you had that $100 sticker. Even Mayor Mel Lastman had to admit the optics were bad. Yeah, well, the yeah. stickers I don't like, because the stickers is saying, hey, look, I paid my dues, now I paid my protection, now leave me alone. But people with decals getting favoured treatment was only the beginning of the problem. Mayor Mill's best friend was becoming a big headache. The critics worried about how the money from True Blue would be used. Would Ramel spend it on private investigators to gather dirt on his political enemies? I told them that the public is very concerned about the two... Even Bromel's biggest backers were getting campaign. nervous. Police board member Jeff Lyons stunned the meeting when he suddenly turned on Bromel. I also was intimidated. I also was told that I was being investigated. I also had my office, because I'm a lawyer, had it swept to make sure there was no bugs in the room. I don't think this union gets it, but the time has come to stop now. Thanks very much, Mr. Lyons. Sandy? There are some critics who say that you know, you backed Craig Brumell and his guys when it was polit politically advantageous to do so. And it's only when there's a public outcry that a whole bunch of people, yourself, Mel Lastman, Norm Gardner, are all changing their stripes. Well, I, I think the board knew that I wasn't pro Brumell for a number of months now. I've said it quietly. I've said it to a number of people. I think he's gone too far. And I felt when this campaign was starting to look like it was like selling protection, I said, it's time to stop them. I mean, after a while, you have to do what is right. When Judy Scroll was battling Craig Brumell, you stood on the sidelines. I felt at that point in time it was a personal issue. When I really got upset and concerned is when she left the board and it still continued. It wasn't the end with Judy Scroll. It just meant that she was one person he used along the way to advance his agenda, but now he's going to use others. And that's the time to tell him to stop. You're not worried at all about the perception that you guys are no. acting like thugs? No. The politicians pleaded with Bromel to put an end to True Blue, but Bromel was not about to back down. He said the money would be used to lobby politicians on law and order issues, not for targeting people on an enemies list, a list that two months ago, union lawyer Gary Cluley said didn't even exist. We don't have an enemies list. I mean, uh, we don't have time. And besides, we'd have to always be updating it. That, that takes a lot of work. I mean, we... We just, uh, we just respond uh, uh, to people who unfairly attack us. We don't go around picking fights. I mean, this isn't uh, McCarthyism. It's just, we're just sticking up for ourselves. And while the city says the phone campaign is illegal, they may not have the legal power to shut it down. The fate of True Blue will be decided in the courts. However, despite the uproar, Craig Rommel's power is undiminished. He is still the unquestioned leader of the 7,000-strong police union. And now there's evidence that he's using that power not just against politicians, but against those he perceives to be his enemies within the police service. 
October 1999. Bramill and others are being honoured at a special ceremony for police officers with 20 years service or more. All the top brass are here, but behind the smiles and handshakes, a real power struggle is going on. Bramell is challenging the authority of these senior officers in court, and he's even published unflattering report cards on the command. The senior officer who has tangled with him the most is Deputy Chief Bob Kerr, a 35-year veteran of the force. Almost from the day he joined this police service, he could be seen as basically he's going to be trouble. He doesn't like the idea that I'll do my job and I won't roll over for him. And frankly, he and I have gone head to head over a couple of issues. So you stand in the way of Craig Bramell and his executive. I do have a reputation of being hard-nosed. Uh, I personally believe I'm just firm, fair, and I'm very consistent. One of the unpardonable sins Kerr has committed in the eyes of the union, he's a strong supporter of civilian oversight, and the union says he's just too cozy with the SIU, the Special Investigations Unit. Your Honor, first of all, I want to congratulate the uh, newest members of SIU. Some of you here are aware that I have always had a keen interest in civilian oversight. I have a very strong belief in it. The dispute between Kerr and the Union has gotten very nasty. When police detective Bill Hancock was stabbed to death, a police source leaked the damaging information that two of Hancock's partners had been drinking that night. And the source of the leak? The Union hinted strongly it was Kerr. One day I came into work and uh, reading the media, I became quite upset the fact that uh, when this issue of officers drinking on duty and I read in the paper that I was the snitch that made it public that uh, these officers, in fact, had been drinking on duty. What's in it for the Toronto Police Association to finger you as a snitch on the rank and file? Well, that may be one way of getting rid of me, just wear them down. Wear the deputy police chief down, he'll resign, retire. Last December, the union thought they finally had a chance to get rid of Kerr. Julian Fantino was chosen as Toronto's new police chief. Bramell met with him and demanded that Fantino get rid of Kerr when Fantino took over the force in April. But it doesn't appear as if the union is prepared to take any chances. A police officer came to me privately and indicated that there was a conversation overheard to the effect that if Kerr doesn't retire or at least put his papers in by March, um, that they have information that they're going to make public. Where's that coming from? They? Who are they? But my interpretation is that the police association executive have some dirt on me that they're going to use. Do you fear Craig Bramell? Yes. You're the deputy chief of the Toronto Police, and you fear Constable Craig Bramell? Yes. What does that say to the public? It's all, it's all very frightening. The men in black say it's going to be business as usual with the new police chief. That new man, Fantino, is going to work out just fine. So, guys, uh, how do you think we can improve the uh, quality of the uh, policing on the streets of Toronto? You know, I mean, that's really why we're here, isn't it? Look at Fantino in <laughs> but will Craig Bramell be able to continue the campaign of intimidation he boasted to us about two months ago? You don't mind intimidating people? Uh, no, because for a long period of time there's been a lot of people trying to intimidate us one way or another. And, and it's uh, payback time? It's not payback time, it's just a catch-up time. That's our program for tonight. I'm Victor Malarek. For all of us here at the Fifth Estate, good night.